uh, handing us over lists of their agents that we haven't spotted. We've spotted most of them, but there are some we haven't, I'm sure. Uh, a deal requires statesmanship, and we don't have any of that because we don't have any statesmen. So uh, I don't think a deal is likely. If we put somebody serious in charge in Washington and in London, uh, we've already got somebody serious in charge in Moscow called Vladimir Putin, very nice man, uh, we will be able to sort this out peacefully. My guess is no, and that is why the, the talk has been titled Countdown to War. I'm not sure it was my idea, but uh, Countdown to War, because I think that's where we're headed. Uh, short of serious statesmanship, so, short of a willingness to get the world's problems sorted out, uh, the answer is a third war with Germany, only this time not making the mess up we did in 45 and shutting down their intelligence, not third time lucky, learn from the mistakes of 1918 and 45, actually don't throw away the lives, the brave lives that have been uh, sacrificed in order to get you where you are, don't give up the lives that you've lost as easily as we did in 45 and 18, and close their intelligence down and break up Germany into its constituent parts like Bavaria and Prussia. Now key German players understand this. We've already negotiated with the Germans. What states would you like? Uh, we were going to mix in Baden-Württemberg with the Bavarians and the boys in Baden-Württemberg said, hey, we don't want to go in with the Bavarians. We don't like the Bavarians. They're a bunch of drinkers and Catholics. We'd like to be separate. So Baden-Württemberg will be independent. Um, break it up into constituent parts and for heaven's sake, shut down its intelligence and for once and for all, get all the names of all the German spies that have ever been out there in the open, unless there's some private deal and they're handing you more than, uh, you know, there's something of value in exchange for covering up their role as a German spy, so that people know what's happened, why Vietnam happened, why Korea happened, uh, know all about the drug trafficking, know which politicians are bent and which aren't, uh, and uh, we can start to have our democracies uh, properly functioning. How do we win a war with Germany? It's the same strategic reality, hasn't altered since 1914, it's a two-front war. Uh, and that is why the Russians, who understand this, are moving their forces slowly and steadily westwards of the Ural, and we think the Russians are probably penciling in a war with Germany somewhere around the spring of 2012. Uh, we'd like it out of the way before the Olympics. Always, always, always a bit difficult having an Olympics in the middle of a war. Um, if we want it out of the way before the Olympics, we'll need to start in the spring. The Russians won't start it before 2011. Uh, they're very worried about uh, a cold winter in 20, 2011, 2012, predicted to be cold. Uh, they need firm ground for their tanks. Uh, the Russians don't want to mount an armoured thrust across Germany, the North German plain, in the winter. Uh, so the war is likely to start in the spring. Uh, it will be a serious war. And uh, the, uh, the, the way to defeat Germany is for Britain to come in from the west um, and for the Russians to come in from the east and Bob's your uncle. Uh, one front wars with Germany are a waste of time. Always, if you're having a war with Germany, at least I'm sure Harry and I would agree on this, if we're going to have a war with Germany, make sure there's somebody coming in through the back door. Never, ever have a one front war with Germany. Lasts too long, takes too long. Uh, the next war with Germany would probably be over in about 90 days because the Germans, the German intelligence, ladies and gentlemen, my final point before we go to questions, German intelligence have been murdering people, uh, smuggling heroin, cocaine, what you name it, sponsoring terrorism, blowing up buildings. Uh, they have been writing checks which the German military cannot cash. And if you talk to senior German military commanders who are in the loop, you will find yourself talking to some very nervous generals because they know they are likely to have to carry the can for all this nonsense uh, if the balloon goes up. And if the Germans aren't careful, uh, the balloon will be going up, well and truly. Ladies and gentlemen, th that's my analysis. Thank you. Now, questions. Albert. 80,000 soldiers in our army, not all of them are... Well, not the last figures. It's about 80,000. But even if they were all 30, 80,000 frontline troops... Yep. German army has a thousand main battle tanks. We have somewhere in the region of 240. Mm -hmm. It means every one of our tanks has to take out five of theirs without us losing a tank before we can remove their thing. The only way, surely, that we could live with a war with Germany, and this they will not be prepared to risk, is by the use of nuclear weapons. No. We could not win a war with conventional weapons with Germany because our armed forces have been so badly run down by traitors in our own government 
that they are incapable of defending this country, let alone attacking another one like Germany. Albert, you're missing, you're missing the point, with respect. Uh, you see, you're, you're right. If, if we're talking UK, Germany on our own, that no, nobody but a madman would propose, and, and bear in mind the war is likely to be started by Germany, so it won't be, our t it won't be at a time of our choosing. Uh, nobody but a madman would uh, realistically contemplate a war with Germany with the armed forces in our current state. Now, there are two answers to your question. The first is that as in 39, as in 1914, and the same situation applied in both years, our armed forces were run down, uh, hopelessly under-equipped, far too small in both 1914 and 1939, is a very rapid ramp-up of our capabilities. So don't, don't assume that any war with Germany would be on the basis of existing capabilities. Absolutely not. Secondly, second point, uh, you're forgetting that uh, what I have just suggested is likely to happen is a two-front war. You're looking at Germany's figures of main battle tanks, which in fact are a bit higher than 1,000. They've got about 2,000. And you're looking at Germany's main battle tanks compared to ours, uh, but you've also got to figure in the Russians. Well, can, I, can I just come no, back? No, not just. Let's yeah, see if I, somebody else. I'd yes. like you to do one question each so that everybody has a fair turn. Could I just Then you can come back with permission. Could I just finish on, on Albert's point? Yeah. Yes. Uh, any analysis of the military balance has to include the armed forces of Russia and Belarusia and Poland. When you add Belarus, Russia, and Poland to the UK, all of a sudden, the balance goes way the other way against the Germans. Now, the next problem, the third point that you've missed with great respect, is that although the German army is, you know, your figures are about right, none of these troops, with the exception of a very small handful, are battle-hardened. There's all the difference in the world between a battle-hardened army, like the British army, um, and the German army, which has not been tested in major combat operations since 1945. And the Luftwaffe has not engaged in major combat operations since the Vietnam War. There are no Luftwaffe pilots with combat experience in the Luftwaffe at the moment. The last Luftwaffe combat pilot, the, the last Luftwaffe officer with combat experience gained in in North Vietnam, shooting down American B-52s and U.S. Navy F-4s, uh, retired, I think, about three years ago. Uh, the Luftwaffe, not engaged in major combat operations for, since 1973, the German Army not engaged, and the German Navy not engaged in major combat operations since 1945. Now, the British officers are battle-hardened. Are battle uh, the Russian forces are also, to some extent, battle-hardened, uh, because the Russians, remember, have been fighting very successfully a counterintelligence war in Chechnya. And the Russians are very sensibly rotating forces in and out of Chechnya in order to make sure as many of their forces are battle-hardened as, as, as possible. On the main battle tank situation, uh, the German Leopard 2 is thought to be outclassed by the latest versions of the Russian T-80. The Leopard 2 is a reasonable tank, it's a reasonable panzer, uh, but it's not that brilliant a panzer and it is a 20-year-old design. Most of the German panzers are old. There are very few panzers in current German service less than, uh, less than 20 years old. Um, and although they're okay, uh, the, uh, they're, they're, they're frankly uh, not thought to be up to the scratch uh, with the latest Russian main battle tanks. And finally, finally, the major critical problem the Germans have is an absence of air power. Yes, they have a large number of troops on the ground. The Luftwaffe is frankly rubbish, and it's thought unlikely that the Luftwaffe would still be operational after seven days. In short, with Russian and RAF uh, forces engaged against the Luftwaffe, it is unlikely there would be a, a single staffen of the Luftwaffe operational after seven days. Their airfields are vulnerable to attack. Their tanks, once we have Allied air superiority over Germany, their Panzers are extremely vulnerable, and the Germans are way out of date uh, with modern warfare. Uh, the, the, Germans, so the, 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 the last major war the Germans fought was Vietnam. They are way, way behind in the development of tactics and weapons. They have virtually no smart weapons, for example. Your name. Uh, aren't you